basically, basically what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you what it's like to uh, run a cannon battery if they allow me to get one. First, uh, first you gotta swab it. Once you clean it out, then you could get one of the three different rounds that they have in the artillery container, in the ammo container. I don't know the proper word for it, but you grab one of them after you clean. You sponge, you sponge the, the barrel. You get a round, you insert the round. Then you gotta prime the cannon. Then there's a string attached to it, and you walk back a bit, uh, away from it till the, the string is tight, and then you yank it, and you fire the cannon off. And if you're lucky, the cannonball will hit something. Come on, the baby, ready. There should be nobody in here, so it's just me. should have deployed me already. Auto and Sheriff Farm attacking. Sounds like it's right. Alright, so here are the, like, these are the reserve wagons of ammo. So quickly there's a way that these detach. But I've, I've not had to, I haven't worked on how to figure out attaching these things yet to get into them to get more ammo. But hopefully there's a way at some point when you need to get in there. But one of the uh, ammo uh, we use, let's see, we should use the first can. Yeah, we'll just use the first can. So you come up to the uh, three inch ordnance. Let's see if they're different. Let's check them all out. Let's see. Three inch ordnance. Twelve pound gun. Alright, here we go. And twelve pound. So let's try the twelve pounders. We're gonna work this one right here. Okay, first, before you see, th things you can do with this, you can push the wheel, you can get it closer, and I believe attach it. Uh, you can open the limber chest. Okay, so that's what it's called now. We know it's called the limber chest. Hit the F key, Frank, or Foxtrot key, and it opens up the limber case. 12 pounds. So you can see there's a shell. You can take a shell, you can take a case. You could take the canister. A canister is, I guess, a smoke grenade. And it tells you right there, table of fire, light 12 pounder model, 1857. Alright, so let's go to the cannon itself. Let's get the sprint over there quick time. Now, there's uh, various things you could do here. You could come over here and pick up the trail spike, which means you could turn it, you know, if you need to angle this more to the right or to the left, turn it all the way around this way. Wherever you want, you can move the cannon. So that's the uh, trail spike. Over here, you can adjust the screw to turn the elevation screw. Okay, so you can move the cannon up or down, uh, the elevation lower or higher. So here, you can go ahead and uh, push the wheel so you can move the cannon, which you're going to need to do because once you fire it, it rolls back. Okay, so and then in the front, you've got to uh, sponge it. So you hit the F key, the Foxtrot key. I'll sponge it out, make sure it's cleaning it, there's no uh, debris in there, no leftover of uh, anything. Now we'll run back over to grab the shell. Go ahead and grab the F key again. Go ahead and grab the shell. Okay, run over to the left side of the cannon. Double quick. Stand to the left front, see? Because if you stand anywhere over here, it's not going to show. It won't show it. You have to stand to the left of the cannon in the front of it. Now hit the F key to load it. Your F key is a use key. It, it, it does all the functions once it's done. Now here you stand in front of it, so you can uh, ramp around it. Hit the F key again. 
ram the round in there. Now if you ram it, you can go around this left the left side of the cannon. You can prime the cannon. I tried over here, but I don't think you can prime it from the right side. Yeah, see, you can't prime it on this side. Everything generally is done on the left. Okay, so let's prime it. F key again. Put a fuse in there and, and the lanyard. And let's call it something else. So see, you pull back till it stretches tight, which means you're away from it when it rolls back. And uh, it's going to really blast your ears out big time. And let's fire the cannon. I didn't uh, elevate it or lower it in. I just left it where it was at. So let's see where it hits. Uh, you hit the left mouse button key and it fire. Oh. There it is. You can see it rolling. See that? And you can see the path of destruction. You can see where it hit over there. I can't zoom in, unfortunately. But you can see where that powdered smoke hit. The dark powdered smoke. That's pretty much where it hit. So that's how you fire a cannon as one person I'm private in the artillery brigade all right so let's do that again remember the first thing you got to do and I learned this all by myself you got to sponge the barrel out coming from the left side to the front getting close enough to that. sponge it with the F key on the keyboard if you're using a keyboard I don't know what it is if you're using a uh, control Okay, come and grab a round. Let's get a different round. Let's take a case this time. A case it has a red cannonball on it, which I don't know. It's a, it's a flame one, or it causes fire. I don't know what the difference is yet. I have to learn that. I don't know what it is. It's just different color. Come to the left of it, to the left front. There it is. Insert it with the F key. Got it. Uh, ram the round in. Come over to the left side of the cannon. Prime it. Move back, away from it, rolling backwards so it's tight. But if, if, let me show you. It, it just disconnects you from the the, the lanyard of the trigger rope uh, string here. If you pull back all the way, I'll show it to you right now. You go too far, boom, see? It just falls off your hand. So you just gotta go and reprime it again. You could reprime it again, hit the F key, reprime it, and there comes another manual, see? And you just pull back again until you're far away from the cannon so it doesn't hit you. Let's let's do that. Let's get right behind it and see what happens. If you stand behind it. Like nothing. Pretty cool. I guess I'm standing on the I'm standing on this thing. What is it called here? It's fun. I wrote it. Pick up the pole. Oh look at that. <laughs> it's gonna connect it. Pick up the pole. Let's see what, what this is. Anyway, I, that was pretty cool. I was able to ride it. Maybe that's what I'm supposed to do. All right. You hit the F key to uh, grab the wheel, and you hit, hit W to go forward. Or you could hit the D key, Delta key, and it'll do the same thing. It'll roll very slowly back to where you have it. This is a 12-pounder cannon. The other ones are 3-inch. It's a small one. Go and fire that one too as well and see what the difference is. So you want to bring it back up and line it up to where the other 12 pound cannon was at. Get back on line. And um, so since we fired this one already, we'll go ahead and uh, it'll be better if you, uh, of course, you go on this side and roll it so you can line it up so you can see if you're lined up. Uh, anyway, okay, so there it was. Um, 
we went ahead and uh, shot the 12 pounders. Let's go ahead and uh, uh, shoot this uh, three inch. Sponge the barrel first, remember? You gotta clean them all out. The very first thing you have to do, and I learned this uh, by trying to load in a round in it. I went and grabbed the round and I tried to put it in no matter what I did, where I went, it would not load it. Then I realized, I heard on one of the battles I was on, on one of the other servers, I heard uh, one of the sergeants say, don't, oh, in the artillery training, it was an artillery training video. He was saying, don't forget, you got to sponge it first. Because <clears throat> he put he put three, uh, three artillerymen, one here, which is a guy who does the sponging and the ramming. They put the, another guy back in here, which had another, he had another one of these ramming rods. Uh, he put him here so he could prime it. And then he had another back there, uh, which didn't have one of these ramming rods. He was just a private back there bringing the rounds over here. Uh, he would bring the rounds and load them. And then the other guy that was standing here would uh, ram it after he loaded it. So there was one guy bringing the ammo, one guy here uh, sponging and ramming, and then one guy here priming the lanyard while the sergeant's back here barking the orders, fire and all that kind of stuff. So let's go ahead and we already sponged it. And each of these, um, let me get the name again, the limber chests, each of these limber chests have their, uh, are lined up behind their own cannon, as you can see. This one's lined up to the second cannon there in the middle. That one's lined up to that cannon, the first one. This is the second, third, and the fourth over there. So they have, they, they each have their own limit chest. Okay, so let's take the first shell out of here. I already sponged the cannon. Well, these are smaller, look at that. Tiny little three inches. It says up there, range of three inch rifle gun. Route iron, weight uh, 819 pounds. I guess that's what the can is. Not necessarily this this round here, <clears throat> but there you go. It uh, shows you the ranges of it right there. Zero zero range. It's 880 yards. All right. So anyway, anyways, that's what it looks. They they have stuff that you can't grab any of that other stuff. Uh, that's for maintenance of the cannon, but you can't. Uh, so anyway, three inch ordnance, so let's go over to the cannon. Let's uh, double, it's right now double quick time. And this is if you have to run the cannon battery by yourself. There you go, insert the round. You can do it. So if all your teammates get killed, as you can see, you can take care of this. So long as you have a ramming rod, you can take care of all of this yourself. If you're the only one left. Go ahead and ram that rod, that round in there. Once again, this is a three, three inch cannon. Also, let's run back and see what they call them again. It's like a gun. It's a, uh, a three inch rifled gun. So there it is, it's a rifled gun. All right, three inch. <clears throat> so we'll leave the elevation. We don't care about all that right now, really. I really wanted to see it hit the, the ground out there. So let's go ahead and prime it. Once again, remember, it's an F key. Let's go ahead and ride this thing. We can get on top of it. Go ahead and stretch it out a bit. Let's see, are we still on the stick? Yep. Okay, let's go ahead and shoot it. Let's go, we're riding it. <laughs> I think uh, I found uh, probably the best place to be on this cannon is to ride with it. Uh, usually, I'm standing over here to the left side, over here. I shoot it, and yeah, if you see the big puff of smoke out there, that's where it hit. Um, but yeah, so usually I'm here and the thing uh, rings the heck out of my ears and you see it turn gray and everything. You hear me huffing and puffing like it hurt and then it rolls back over there and I gotta go get it. All right, so let's go ahead and wheel this thing back over. And uh, unfortunately, this is about, this is the fastest you can really roll these things. I haven't found the key uh, like you can when you're just running. Uh, you can hit and hold the shift key and hit the C key to double time. Uh, but not with these things. This is as fast as they go if you're rolling it forward or backwards. <clears throat> All right, so 
So now, the only other way that you get the F key to release, now the only uh, thing that the, that will move faster and and uh, you can hold the ship key is when you pick up the spike, the tail spike. So you pick up the tail spike, and once you pick it up, so if you hit, if you're on the keyboard, the alpha key, A key, you can turn it to the, the right. If you hit the delta key, D key, turn it to the left. See how slow it moves? But now if you're holding, say, delta key and shift, watch how fast it'll do it. So hold the delta key and then shift. Boom. Leave out quick. So this is the only way you can move something faster on this cannon or rifle gun. So, so that, let's see, let's go ahead and aim it at this barn over here. Let's see if we can hit that barn. Right, so there it is. Let's go ahead and drop that. Put the F key that drops it. Let's check the elevation on this thing. It looks like it's a bit low, so let's raise it up a bit. Now, the only the way to raise it is W and, uh, and uh, S key, Sierra, Sam. Sam key, uh, Sierra, I'm trying to remember other words for S. Anyway, so hit W. As you can see the numbers on the right bottom of the screen, the W hitting it, that makes the range go up. The elevation goes up. Oh, down. I'm sorry. What? Range. Am I correct? Yeah, it, yeah, okay. W makes it go up. So uh, it's at 500, 600 yards is where it's aimed at, which is a bit too far for that barn. I believe it's less than 600, so let's lower it again by hitting the Sierra Sam key, the S key. Let's lower it, let's say about 300 or something. Let's try that, 300 yards. And hit the F key to release that. Okay, now let's go ahead, since we fired it once already, let's make sure, make sure we sponge it. Sponge it. Nope. Okay, let's go ahead and sponge it now. Clean it out. Any leftover debris in there. Um, make sure that there's nothing in there that has leftover powder or anything dirty that can really mess up. Alright, let's try this other. Uh, let's take a case this time. Yeah, see how the, the round looks more like a bullet? This is like a rifle, a three inch rifle. Load this sucker. You gotta get it just perfect or else you won't see that little word, the, the loading come out on there. So let's go ahead and get in front and ram it. See how you gotta get a certain way, area, a certain distance in order for you to uh, make the function happen. Alright, it's loaded. Let's go ahead and prime it. And let's see, let's ride it again. Let's go ahead and ride this thing. Oh, what happened? Oh, no, the lander's uh, still on. Okay, we're on it. Alright, let's go ahead. Fire! Oh! We rode the, the cannon or the rifle gun. Let's see, did it hit? Now, you, once the cannon or this rifle gun shoots, this three inch rifle gun or cannon gun, whatever, uh, you'll hear a secondary explosion, which is the one hitting whatever you're trying to hit. Now, let's check something out here. Let's, if it hit, there'll be a hole in, in the barn. Uh, okay, I don't see any holes over there. Now, let me show you something uh, also. Yeah, nothing. You missed everything completely. Now, let me show you something else. Say like you ran out of all your, your, your cannon rounds and your three inch or 12 pounders, whatever, and um, I don't know if that happens or not because I haven't played a full actual mission on this um, as an artilleryman. But if anything, or let's say they're attacking you. Well, let's check this out first. Did I make a hole in this? Did I hit it? Oh, look. Look at that. I think I did it. Yes, we did. We hit it right there. Boom. Right there. That's where the shell hit. Right in the center. On it. Yeah, dead center. Freaking awesome and accurate is that. That is super cool. I don't know if you'll see anything in the barn if you can get it. Maybe something in there. Could open it. Oh. oh wow, what's in there? A bunch of uh, ammo and stuff? Or what? what do we got? Can we jump in there? Oh yeah, we'll do that. We can get it. 
Now, one thing that uh, they don't have that I noticed is a flashlight. It doesn't have no flashlight, so you can't turn on your flashlight. And, ooh, look at it. Oh, look at that. It hit the barrel. And there's the exit hole right there. So there's there's a little... You could barely faintly see right there in the middle a little shadow. Like it, uh, I guess, uh, showing that it went through, hit that barrel, and went through the backside. But it doesn't obviously show anything like that, like the uh, actual hole, which in my, look at how detailed everything is. You'd think that they would have taken the time to make sure that it made a hole through there. So anyway, yeah, there's the other shadow, that square shadow right there. That's supposed to be the exit hole, but it's not showing for some reason. Okay, so now the other thing I was explaining to you, like what if you're an artilleryman and the enemy is attacking, what's in this barn? So and there's just where the enemy can hide or they can attack you from in here, a bunch of hay. But once you're in here, like in real in real life, if you go into a dark place after coming out of a really light place. Um, you're not going to be able to uh, see very clearly, and your eyes need to adjust. Now, it'd be super cool if you take this axe and start hacking somebody. But don't fret, because I'm going to show you something right now. I just want to check all this stuff out, because I haven't seen Okay. <clears throat> Whoa, there, look at Oh, there's something else. I'll get to what I'm going to explain to you shortly. This is where the cavalry horses are. Oh, I didn't get to show you. Oh, darn it. Confederate won this battle. So what I was going to show you is that you could pull out your sword. That's it, your secondary uh, weapon that you have on you besides that ram rod. Uh, you have a sword that you could pull out as a weapon to fight the enemy if they're attacking. Uh, I talked my mouth off so much I didn't get to show it to you. In 1831, the widow Margaret Ham sold her Mount Pleasant property in two lots. One to Joseph Sherrick and the other to John Otto who became fellow neighbors and parishioners at Dunker Church farther north. The Otto family even donated the bricks for the building of it, while Joseph Sherrick, Samuel Muma, and Daniel Miller supervised its construction. But these picturesque farms would soon be inundated by soldiers and death, with most every scrap of food taken and the farms used as hospitals once the battle had shifted past them. Thankfully, the $3,000 in gold Joseph Sherrick hid in one stone wall was still there when they had the chance to return afterward. However, with the continued advancement of Cook's troops towards the Muma farm farther north, it meant the troops closer to the sunken lane suddenly had enemies to their rear. It forced the bloodied and exhausted members of Kimball's brigade to about face and move to find defensive positions along Roulette Lane near the Clip and Roulette Farms. The cornfields to their new front were teeming with rebels that had already wreaked havoc among several Union regiments as they charged pell-mell across the open fields between the Dunker Church and Muma Farm. Here, the Union regiments would attempt to hold off against this last-ditch effort by the Confederates as devilish cries reached their ears. <clears throat> All right. So let's... Really quickly, let's get back in there and try to do this again. Just to show you the, uh, the swords. See, there's a sword. There's a secondary weapon right there. Now, I don't know if they if it's call it exactly a sword or a long knife. <laughs> I'm not sure. It's not a bayonet. Okay. So. As you can see in the shadow, you got your ram and rod. So now you hit the two key, number two, boom, pulls out your, your short long long knife, some, some short sword, whatever you want to call it, because I don't know the proper name right now. All right, now you have it out, but it's not. It's in the ready. But if you see, you hit the left mouse button key, and nothing happens to to fight with. You have to hit the victor key, V. V will bring out your sword and get it to the ready. I, I meant to say we were in standby, we were in idle. And that's why it, it, you didn't see it come out or you couldn't swing with it. But now that it's out, 
you hit the left mouse button, boom. It's tab, it's slice. That's what I wanted to show you um, if you're being attacked by the soldiers, by the enemy. Pull out your sword, which is the number two key, and you put, hit number two again. It tells you in the bottom right, shoulder arms. Down there where my microphone and green dot shows me that I'm recording and the microphone's on. You hit two again, nothing happens. So that thing, you hit the left mouse, mouse button, the right mouse button, nothing happens. You have to hit the V key, Victor, in order for it to come out. Yeah. And you hit V again, it'll put it back your shoulder. V again, it brings it out. Boom. I can stab, thrust, slice, yeah. swashbuckle, whatever. You know. Alright, so there it is. Alright. Let's see what kind of cannon weights they have here. Oh yeah, to put it back and get back to your um, to your ramming rod, you just hit number one. Because number one is your ram rod, your main um, And as you can see, which I just learned right now, this is the very first time I even tried this. I had I had the ram rod and I thought, let me hit the V Victor key. And see what that does. Well, as you can see, it, it makes the ramrod a weapon now. I can hit with the ramrod. So if the enemy's coming at me, boom, I can whack them with it. Now, so long as they don't have a round in the chamber for them to shoot at me, and they're close by me, as I'm trying to load the, the cannon and they come at me, boom, I can use the, the ramming rod to uh, defend myself. Okay, let's see what kind of weight of weapons they have here. Now, oh yeah, let's hit V again to come back to regular. Three inch range, three inch ordnance, okay. And I guess the easiest way to tell, yep, the 12 pounder. I guess the easiest way to tell what a three inch from a 12 pounder is the color. You can see these are like copper, gold, or whatever. Gold or brass, I should say. And those are 12 pounders, and the three inches are black. See that? So that's one easy way to tell. Now let's make sure that uh, these are all three inches, and the others are 12 pounders. Yep, three inch ordnance. Three inch ordnance, there you go. Alright, so let's go to one of these. Let's just go run through this once again. Uh, just as a refresher. So you got to sponge the front. Oh, I don't want to get that. I want to use this 12 pounder. You want to sponge it first. That's the very first thing you got to do. And remember, you always got to come from this side, left of the cannon, and then move forward in front of it to clean it out. And load the rounds and all that. You always have to be on that left side. All right. We sponged it out. Let's go ahead and grab a round. We have to open it first. I forgot what the name is, but it's going to tell you right here. Limber chest. So you get your round from the limber chest. Get the first one. You got to remember that. Limber chest. Limber chest. I already remember that tail end of this cannon is a spike. And then you have your, uh, your elevation screw. Then you have, your, of course, the wheel. Something I'll push the wheel. I it had a name to the wheel. I'm like, what? What is it? There's a name to it? Okay. Load around. Okay, get in front of it to it says ram the room around. Okay, get the round, round rammed. I'm going to try to hit that barn right there. Come over here and prime the can. Prime it. Hit the F key. Everything's F, the function key. Now, I'm going to show you what, um, what it sounds like hanging out to the left of the cannon here. Rings your ears like crazy. Okay? Hit the left mouse button if you're using a mouse and keyboard. Like I said, I don't know what the key is if you're using a controller. But All 
Alright, here we go. Fire! Okay, I didn't see it do anything. Hold on. Okay, so there it is, guys. We, I showed you how to fire the cannon. I mean, first, how to sponge it out. Because if you don't sponge it out first, you won't be able to load around in there. I show you how to load around from... Oh, uh, the names. Why can't I remember this name? I think Spencer Chess. It's not a Spencer. It's a... What? What is it called? Take a shell. No, I don't want to take a shell. Okay. I don't want to close it now. Okay, we can't. Limber chest, okay. Now, I showed you how to open the limber chest, get around from there, I showed you how to push the wheels, I showed you how to uh, load the round in there, I showed you how to prime the cannon, I showed you how to move the wheel, uh, and, uh, lift up the spike and turn it, and move the elevation, I showed you all that. I showed you how to use your ramming rod as a weapon by hitting V, Victor key. Now it's a weapon, and they start striking your enemy. I showed you hitting the the two key, uh, switches to your sword, your short knife or long knife, I should say. Hit the victor key so that you can start using it. As, uh, as see that? And hit number one to get back to your ramp. Alright, if I miss something, you just gotta look at the video again and uh, refresh all the things I went through here on, the, on how to. Uh, fire the cannon and use it. I learned this all myself today within like uh, uh, 20 minutes. I just figured it all out by myself. Never had any formal training from any uh, site, you know, any of, any of the uh, sites that uh, train you on it. I learned it all on my own and that's what you could have done too. But anyway, unless you have already good for you. So there it is everybody. Hope you enjoyed the video and uh, it's useful to you. Uh, at some point, I'm going to start learning everything about the soldiering and how to uh, use your weapon, how to put on your bayonet, and all that kind of stuff. If you're new to uh, the War of Rights, which I'm new to it as well, but I'm learning very quickly, I'll share that all with you. Okay, until next time, everybody, take care of yourselves. Oh, I got a st uh, stamp, date stamp this. Today is Sunday, the 5th of November, 2023. All right, everybody, it's Keith Sr. Uh, bid me all um, blessings and health and prosperity. Until next time, take care of yourselves and everybody else. Bye, everybody.